Hi, this is Jim Silver. Welcome to Shop Talk. This week's guest is Eric Nyman, president of Hasbro North America. Eric, welcome. Thank you, Jim. Excited to be here on Shop Talk. Well, let's jump right into it. Sure. And one of the hot topics in the toy business is knockoffs. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody agrees knockoffs are bad for the business. Companies spend a lot of money on R&D and, you know, it stinks when somebody knocks them off. What is a knockoff? Because there's a big argument. If somebody, you know, the Mark Zuckerberg, if you make a chair, make a better chair, is that a knockoff? How, how would you define a knockoff? Well, I think it's defined, it's, you know, a knockoff really from a legal standpoint is where companies like Hasbro clearly need to protect our trademark rights. We need to protect um, our brands. And I think when we think about knockoffs, it's something that, you know, is very near and dear to us in the toy industry and something that we need to prevent. You know, we spend, as you mentioned, companies like Hasbro will spend anywhere um, between, you know, four to five percent on R&D, which is a significant investment for a company, you know, um, as it, you know, relates to our sales. And, you know, we have great leading edge design teams, incredible innovation, great marketers. We spend a lot on storytelling and content. And when people go directly at our products and make copycat type products and infringe on either our marks or our patents and our innovation, then that is something we take very seriously. And, you know, we will continue to be a company that protects against that vigorously. Is there anything that can be done about this? You know, I talk about retailers, maybe not buying the product, but, you know, retailers have their own plan. Uh, is there anything else that can be done? Well, I think, you know, as an industry, it's something that we always have to take very seriously. I think the industry groups have a significant role to play in um, talking about the issue and making sure that people are aware that it is a big issue. I think as manufacturers, as I said before, you know, um, pr protecting our marks, our patents, that's going to be something that we continue to do as well as several of the other leading branded manufacturers in the industry. And I think retailers have a role to play as well. And I think you are going to continue to see that you know, our retail partners will um, partner with branded companies to try to prevent the role of direct knockoffs. It's more difficult in the world of e-commerce and marketplaces, yeah. and that's something that, you know, as we go forward into the future, I think there'll be continued efforts to make sure that we protect our rights, as I said. Eric, let's talk about the action figure category, and I'm always amazed when I come up to Hasbro, you have a different perspective of the category, and it used to be just four to 10 year olds, but Hasbro breaks it down. Uh, you have a large segment for collectors. You have a large segment for what I call mainstream, maybe five to eight year olds. And you also have a pre preschool segment, you know, the hero segment. Um, can you, you know, share with us a little bit about your vision of the whole, so to speak, action figure category? Yeah, I mean, action figures are certainly a, an incredibly important part of Hasbro's legacy. You know, we introduced G.I. Joe as the original action figure, and all the way through today, we continue to be, in our minds, you know, one of the best innovators in the action figure marketplace. From a consumer segmentation standpoint, which is what I think you're getting after, right. um, you know, there are certainly three big areas that we see. The kids area in the marketplace, which is, you know, primarily kids six to ten years old. That area is certainly stable as it pertains to action figures and, you know, as entertainment goes in and out of the marketplace and certainly with great brands like Transformers, we're able to continue to build a really strong foundation there. But we're seeing a lot of heat in the two other areas of the market that you mentioned, which is the preschool licensed character element as well as the fan-driven element. I think for the preschool area, you know, you're really talking two to five-year-old boys and girls it's an area that we continue to be very excited about and motivated by at Hasbro um, as it pertains to action figures and play patterns. And I think you've seen us um, with our own brands like Transformers, where we have around the blueprint Transformers Rescue Bots. And we have a great story and you know, wonderful animation and great content for kids as well as great products. Um, we also have great partnerships and we've launched you know, um, with Marvel, for example, play schools, uh, superhero adventures behind the Marvel brands like Spider-Man. And that's a great, great opportunity for us. And most recently, with our acquisition of Power Rangers, we really see a tremendous opportunity in that two to five year old set. And we're very excited about growing that. I think on the fan side, that's been something that, you know, over the last decade or so has really exploded. And we are very, very enthused as to what that could be for, you know, for Hasbro. We launched um, our own brand, you know, Transformers Generations, 
um, you know, several years ago, and that continues to grow and become a very meaningful part of our business. Again, with our great partnerships with Marvel, we have Marvel Legends, and that's a significant piece of our action figure business. And um, of course, the Black with Star Series, yeah. yeah so say, of course, yeah, the Star, the Star Wars, Wars coming out Black as a series. movie. Yeah. Um, this fourth quarter, you know, our Star Wars Black Series product line is very, very strong, and um, you know, we continue to add to that. You know, again, as I mentioned, Power Rangers before, we have a Power Rangers Lightning Series line now that goes after that fan and. You know, we're seeing that rise of the fan economy. It, it's, it's really fun for us. A lot of our designers and folks like me are actually fans of these brands too. And it allows us to kind of take that passion and turn it into, you know, great product and great opportunity. And, um, you know, we're starting to find new business areas to, um, you know, around that idea like Hasbro Pulse, which is our direct-to-consumer fan initiative. So I think, you know, all these things are very exciting. and. Um, and you're seeing the opportunity to really do a lot more business in this action figure arena. The, the one part I don't understand, and nobody's been able to explain it to me, and I don't know if you can explain it to me, <laughs> always a surprise question, is that when you're looking at the collector base, and it seems to be a higher demographic of females that play with collector products. It's almost like younger kids, it starts out more male, and as you get older, there are more females in the collector base. There are a lot of huge Marvel fans and Star Wars fans buying products, but they don't buy products as kids. I, I mean, am I right in that evaluation, or what are you seeing? Well, I think a lot of these, um, these brands have done an incredible job at inclusivity over the last you know, five to 10 years, and I think that's brought in a considerable, considerable amount of new fandom. You know, if you think about, for example, the Transformers movies, those started in 2007, you know, and now we're in 2019. So you're talking about a 12, you know, 12 year time horizon. The Marvel movies really, you know, the last 10 years with the rise of Iron Man and then the Avengers. So these fandoms have exploded across different demographics and psychographics. So I think what you're seeing is really just a natural evolution of people's attraction to these brands. They didn't know the stories before, but because of the, you know, because of all the different type of channels and theatrical releases, they're now opening their eyes to these amazing characters and frankly, these amazing inclusive storylines where there's heroines and heroes. And um, I think, you know, again, it cuts across all different types of demographics and psychographics. And I think that's brought a lot of people in that weren't necessarily into a lot of these brands and properties before. Another change that I've seen in terms of properties, I feel like studios are more inclusive with their major partners. I mean, it used to be that you know, major toy companies would be like, you know, we're, we would not find out the storyline and to the very end we'd make product and we'd find out somebody else was the star. It doesn't seem to be that way anymore. That the studios are more tied into manufacturers, letting them know who the key players are, and even having some manufacturers have a little input in terms of movies. Sure. Yeah. And you know, I think it's been it's been a really great evolution on that scale as well between the partnership between content providers and uh, manufacturers. And now I think the lines are clearly blurred. You know, I think yeah. if you look at um, you know under the leadership of Brian Goldner at Hasbro, for example, and our great executive team you've seen that we've really started to move from a toy and game manufacturer to a true entertainment and play company where you know we're in we are working with paramount to make terrific movies and we have content providers all around the world and i think that's a very important relationship for our industry and for hasbro specifically and i think you'll continue to see that build and when you have those great relationships clearly you can start to make sure that you're working up front a little bit earlier in the timeline, um, you know, and tying in your retail, our retail partners to make the very best product and best retail experiences that we can so that consumers ultimately are surprised and delighted. And that's really what we, you know, what we're in business to do. Well, when you're making these films and you're making all these action figures, do you have to do work with any of the celebrities, you know, in terms <laughs> of likeness? Uh, I think you might have mentioned you, you've worked a little bit with Chris Evans or Chris Hemsworth. and Sure. Yeah, you know, we're... You, we're, we're, you it, didn't pick fights with Chris Hemsworth, <laughs> did you? <laughs> well, at 5'9", uh, 160 pounds, no. That, that would not be a would, smart move yeah. for me. Um, but yes, you know, I think it's a, it's a really special industry in that regard. Um, you know, I think we have a terrific um, design and development team, as I mentioned, and we have all these great partnerships. We have a great brand publicity team. So we have the privilege to really work with a lot of incredible people who have great pop culture connectivity. And you know, I think that starts with, again, our own brands like Transformers and 
you know, we've had some really terrific talent that have been part of our Transformer theatrical and animated content, which is great. And, you know, we've had the same opportunity with some of our incredible partnerships like Marvel, as you mentioned, um, and Star Wars. And I expect that to continue. Clearly today, as you're seeing the rise of influencers, we have some of the very best partnerships with some of the leading influencers, both from kids all the way through adults that, um, you know, we continue to foster and be surprised and delighted by ourselves. And I think you'll see that continue. Uh, you know, on a personal note, it's one of the, one of the great delights of, of my life to be able to be as, in an industry like this. And, you know, um, at a couple of the different toy industry events, the Toy Industry Hall of Fame induction, as an example, for me to be able to meet somebody like George Lucas and shake his hand and tell him what a, what a meaningful impact, you know, his storytelling with regards to Star Wars had on my own personal life as a kid, a child of the 80s growing up with Star Wars, that was tremendously important and impactful. And, um, you know, so I think this kind of, this industry allows for that. Um, and for folks who are looking for a career and to build careers in, in an industry that, you know, where you're really tying into pop culture, I think this is one of the very best for that. You mentioned content before, and recently Hasbro put in a bid for E1. Now, mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about E1. I understand you can't talk about E1, but can you just talk about the direction of Hasbro want to acquire a content company and what it means for Hasbro and the direction the company's heading? Sure. You know, with E1, again, I can't talk about it right, today I understand because that. Yes. we're in that period where, the, um, where it hasn't right. closed yet at this point. The deal hasn't closed. But with regards to content, right. it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's an incredibly um, important part of our brand blueprint. You've heard our, our executive team talk about that for several years now. And, um, you know, content and storytelling is really at the center of what we do. And I think when you look at the capabilities of some of the companies out there that we partnered with, Again, the, the, the premise that um, licensed preschool entertainment is incredibly important um, as a fuel for storytelling and character development. That's something that we're going to continue to be excited about as, a, as a, you know, a leading entertainment and play company. And I think as you think about the capabilities on um, adult live action and all the different types of streaming networks that exist today, you know, we're going to continue to want to tell our great stories around brands like Transformers and um, and other brands to an older audience. And I think that those entertainment capabilities are incredibly important to us. So we'll continue to add around our blueprint when, we, you know, when the time is right. Now, s switching subjects, the game categories really seem to take off over the last few years. Yeah. I mean, there's a big resurgence in game playing. And another great thing Hasbro does, I notice when I visit Hasbro, is you really look at the game category from a micro vision. You know, a lot of people look at the game ca category very macro as a mm. whole category, but you look at it as preschool games, uh, you, you know, older kids, family games, kids games that parents would play with kids, also the adult market. Um, why do you think the games category has grown so much over the last few years and uh, has really helped gra Hasbro grow also? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. The game category is hot right now, and I think it's terrific to see a healthy games category. You know, it is a very important part of our business. We have what I believe is the very best design, development, and marketing team in the industry for gaming, and we continue to spend a lot of time and a big area of focus on that because it's such a meaningful part to Hasbro's business. You know, if you think about trends that we're seeing right now, I think there are several. Um, you're right to highlight that the classic games um, is a real area of um, success right now. We're, we're seeing the emergence of gaming cafes and things all around us from a pop culture standpoint. Which well, people actually talk to each other when they play games. That's right. And, and I, think, like I think that idea of face-to-face -face gaming, which is a term that, that we use, is, is really important right now. You know, as people are you know, tied into their social media so often and not necessarily having that sit-down time to have one-on-one -on -one relationships with either their friends or parent to child. And, I think that's really important. You know, another trend we're seeing is the shareability of gaming. People, right. while they do sit down and play, they also like to share that with others. And we've seen that, you know, because of social media, some of these game titles that, um, that we've created. Well, I think of Pie Face. I mean, Pie Face was example. the first game that really changed, I think, the world of social media in the gaming category. Yeah, I, we yeah. agree. Yeah. And, and, you know, we continue to sell <laughs> Pie Face is a great brand at Hasbro. And I think that idea of 
playing and sharing and the shareability of gaming is something that we'll continue to explore and you'll see a lot more from, from Hasbro. With regards to the success with Pyface, we obviously had a great follow-on success with things like Speak Out. Um, and now you're seeing, you know, recently launched a game like Ms. Monopoly where there's a great amount of social conversation that happens when, you know, you're bold enough to put out titles that people want to talk about. And I think that's important to a company like Hasbro. Let's talk about, let's stay on Miss Monopoly for a minute. Sure. What was the vision behind Miss Monopoly? You know, the reason yeah. for bringing out that version. I think it's a timely way to honor female inventors and young female inventors in particular. And, you know, it, it's an important part of um, what Hasbro is all about, which is we want to be um, considered as one of our values, one of the most inclusive companies in the world to work for. So, you know, when, when these ideas came out from several of our, um, our designers and our developers, we supported it 100%. And I think you're seeing now that, it, um, you know, it's created a lot of social discussion. Um, we've been able to, you know, support some young female inventors as part of the game concept. And the game concept itself celebrates that, that, you know, there are a lot of incredible female inventions over time that haven't necessarily gotten the credit they deserve. And this game allows us to, um, you know, tip our cap to those things and honor them appropriately. So I think you'll see, you know, games like that continue to come from Hasbro and be something that we're proud to bring to market. The other segment that's taken up is adventure gaming. Yeah. And Hasbro's quite involved in that segment with a few different areas. Why is that taken off? It seems like over the last few years, it's just boom. Well, I think, there's, I think there's been a real confluence between physical and digital gaming. And there's a lot of trends that have emerged from that. So, you know, I think one of those things is just the physical and digital divide is now gone. So if you think about a game like Yahtzee, for example, right. right? One of the most successful digital games is now Yahtzee with friends. So again, we're bridging that physical and digital divide and something like magic, uh, you know, a strategy yeah, or magic adventure or game Dungeons like you're talking dragons. about. Yeah. Exactly. Those are, you know, those are, you know, trailblazing in their own ways where you're now seeing a card game that, you know, has tremendous passion and tremendous followership turn into this great digital experience with Magic Arena. And I think you'll continue to see that people like to be able to play these games across these different types of formats and it actually brings more people into the fantasy. And I think that's a really, really great trend and it's something that we're gonna to continue to go after. Another trend that ties right into that is the rise of esports. And I think again, with something like Magic and Magic Arena, you'll continue to see Hasbro open up that arena of esports or you know, esports gaming um, for us as a company. So I think all these things are, are incredible trends and um, you'll continue, I think, to see gaming and gaming brands have a more important role in pop culture as we go forward. And I, clearly, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, this is the year of Fortnite. So, oh, yeah. you know, if you think about that, a free-to-play digital game that's now one of the most powerful brands in the zeitgeist. And, you know, clearly at Hasbro, we're able to participate in that with our Nerf Fortnite products. So I think there's a lot of trends there that you're seeing in gaming. And, um, you know, our job at Hasbro is to, con to continue to stay at the forefront of that and to trailblaze new paths as these new technologies emerge and the confluence between physical and digital gaming continues to explode. I want to go back to 1993. And I was around. <laughs> we were both around. I was, yeah, I was <laughs> around. And I was out of Bandai and they were launching this property called Power Rangers and they were going to ship $9 million. And they ended up selling about $13 million. I met some guy who worked at J. Walter Thompson. His, he was, <laughs> his name was Brian Goldner at, at the time. And a few years later, I was having lunch with Brian when he actually worked at Bandai. And so you go 20 years later, and Brian's always loved that property. Yeah. You bought it. You now own Power Rangers. And one thing that's been talked about is bringing Power Rangers back to its roots. Next year is the first year you're going to have Power Rangers. It's going to be yours. Can you tell a little, a little bit about the plans of Power Rangers going forward? Yeah, we're thrilled about Power Rangers. You're absolutely right. It's a brand that, you know, our CEO and chairman, Brian Goldner, has been actually a big part of building over the years, you know, in different roles. And certainly we've had a great relationship and had a great relationship, continue to have with Haim Saban as he's built the great storytelling behind Power Rangers over the years. And it really is one of those brands that works all the way around Hasbro's blueprint. You know, again, from the storytelling standpoint, there's great content on TV and we have a great partnership here in the U.S. with Nickelodeon. 
Um, you know, there's obviously been movies in the past and probably theatrical opportunities in the future. Um, when you think about the licensing programs that allow us, um, that we can do with Power Rangers, whether it's apparel and soft goods and other types of hard goods outside of the toy and game realm, we're very excited about that. And certainly, you know, the digital gaming element and area that we talked about, that's something that um, is big for Hasbro too. So I think Power Rangers is one of those really great brands for us. It's a really great fit to our brand blueprint vision, and it's something that we're thrilled um, to have as part of the Hasbro portfolio. You have all these IPs and all this content, and in today's day and age, is it easier or harder to get in front of the consumer? And the reason why I say easier or harder, you have movies, you have television, you now have your own digital content. Uh, there's so many different platforms. There's Netflix, there's Amazon. Uh, do you find it harder to choose where to put content, or do you find it easier because you have so many choices, but then again, you have to make different types of content? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a couple ways to go at that. You know, the simple answer is that I think a great story has so many avenues now to be found. And Hasbro spends so much time on consumer insights, you know, our great consumer insights team, our great storytelling. And I think what's great about the world we live in today is that there is a lot of ways to connect with consumers in the pop culture landscape. So I think it's a, you know, it's a very um, democratic way that exists today where, you know, depending on the type of story you have, it's easier in many ways to get your story out there. It is, that said, it's more competitive. Right. So having the right story and then having the right, um, you know, marketing and support around the story certainly helps stories take off. And you know, that's something that I, I think Hasbro is very proud of. We have a very strong brand publicity team, a very strong marketing team, very, um, very passionate individuals who um, you know, bring these stories to the public eye, to the consumer. And then we're very good at focusing those efforts and energy to create pop culture moments. And those pop culture moments are things that you'll continue to experience from Hasbro, whether it is a great movie launch or a powerful animated program launch with a, with a TV studio or streaming network or working with an influencer to launch a new product. You know, any of those ways, and there's many, many more of them, um, are things that we're trying to get better at and strengthen so that we continue to stay at the forefront of this industry. Eric, thank you for coming to Shop Talk. And come visit us on YouTube at a and Shop Talk to see new episodes every month.